life cycle of hookworm and chylostoma duodenal. It's a nematode and it exhibits sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism is a condition in which the two sexes of the same species exhibit different characteristics uh, ex uh, mm, uh, except uh, sorry other than their uh, sexual differences like here you would see the male and female differences these worms are small un unsegmented male female is a bit longer uh, both of them are grayish white in color uh, but in fresh specimen they appear reddish brown due to ingested blood in its intestinal tract. Uh, in uh, male and female both the anterior end is bent uh, to form a buccal capsule having six teeth, four on mental and two on dorsal surface. In male the posterior end is expanded in umbrella like fashion, a copulatory bursa and genital opening opens posteriorly. While in female, no copulatory bursa is present, uh, uh, the posterior end is tapering. And the genital pore, it opens in female uh, at the junction of posterior and middle third of the body. Then this is the image of these worms. This is male, this is female. You can see female is a bit longer than male. Also, the male is having a copulatory bursa, expanded umbrella-like shape at the posterior end, while the female posterior end is a tapering. This is the mouth, uh, having a buccal capsule, having six teeth. Now, let us see the egg. The egg is oval or elliptical and it is colorless, transparent, highline shell membrane and segmented ovum with four blastomeres, you can see. Now the life cycle, um, again explained through this image, eggs are, embryony, uh, sorry, the eggs are laid in uh, pieces containing segmented ova with four blastomeres. They are passed out of pieces. Uh, of the uh, uh, definitive host which is the human beings the only host uh, from each egg um, the uh, rapidity form larva hatches out in soil in about 48 hours this is the rapidity form larva the rapidity form larva it molds uh, twice first on the third day and second on the fifth day and develops in filary form larva in about 8 to 10 days this filariform larva is now infected to humans and molting is a process through which the uh, cuticle or the skin is shed uh, and for the new growth or the hairs or feathers are shed so molting is basically a natural process Now this filariform larva is infective to humans, it casts, uh, casts off its teeth and enters the body by penetrating the skin. You can see the, see the filariform larva is entering through the skin of the uh, foot of a person. Once uh, entered uh, in the body, it enters the subcutaneous tissue then into the lymphatics or small venules, pass through the venules uh, into the circulation to reach the uh, right heart from the right heart it enters the pulmonary circulation in the lungs it breaks through the capillary walls and enters the alveolar spaces then migrates to the bronchi trachea larynx crawl over the epiglottis to the back of pharynx are uh, and are ultimately swallowed in esophagus reaching here in about 10 days during migration on entering the esophagus, third molting takes place and terminal buccal capsule is formed at this stage. Then growing larvae settle down in small intestine and undergo fourth molting to develop into adult worm with a definite buccal capsule complete six teeth. And at three to four weeks, the uh, adult worms they become sexually matured and fertilized females begin to lay eggs. 
which have passed in pieces in about six weeks and the cycle is repeated again so it gains entry through dermal root or through skin then it enters the uh, lymph subcutaneous tissue the lymphatics the venules then to the right heart then to the pulmonary circulation to the alveolar spaces then the bronchi trachea piglottis and swallowed in the esophagus in two esophagus it enters the intestine and in the intestine it becomes uh, adult with complete buccal capsule becomes sexually matured and the females start laying eggs and the eggs are laid uh, eggs come out with the feces from the uh, definitive host again the rhabditiform larva hatches out of the eggs after 48 hours then into filariform larva and filariform larva is once again infective to humans so this was the life cycle of hookworm or the ankylostoma duodenal transmission here is fecodermal uh, that is exa passed in feces and entry occurs through the dermal root to skin definitive host is humans intermediate host is none infective form is the filariform larva adult form in intestine clinical findings dermatitis creeping eruption bronchitis bronchopneumonia and uh, edema dyspepsia pallor epigastric tenderness constipation etc Diagnosis is made through stool culture or duodenal content and even blood tests are done like RBCs etc. The RBC count, the shape and size of RBCs, HB, WBC count because it actually causes microcytic hyperchromic type of anemia due to blood loss. So uh, these tests, blood tests can be done. Treatment is the pyrental pamoate and mependazole. Prevention and control is the proper sewage disposal, wearing of shoes and gloves, treatment of the carrier and diseased persons. The stool culture or the stool, uh, even stool microscopy is done uh, for the eggs and the uh, duodenal content sometime reveal uh, eggs in t uh, eggs. This was about the hookworm. Or the Ankylostoma duodenal. Thanks for watching.